Ladies and gentlemen, human beings are complicated creatures with complicated emotions. We can experience happiness, sadness, excitement, frustration, worry, concern, anger, and pleasure. Now, some people derive pleasure from various activities. Me personally, I like to derive my pleasure from getting brilliant moves in my chess.com games. And in today's video, I'm going to show you a game that I played yesterday where I got 14 of those bad boys. I have played exactly like Stockfish for the second half of the game. I'm gonna show you the game. You kind of probably learn a couple of things. You're going to be probably and hopefully impressed with my play. Uh, it is a little bit of showing off, but it also is very instructive and hopefully entertaining. And before we jump into the game today, I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video, Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN, which allows you to encrypt your connection. Encrypt your connection to the internet so you can browse it privately and anonymously. Do I really start all my ads the same way? Well, then you probably already know you can use Surfshark to log into sensitive portals, like for your job or for banking. You also may know that using a VPN to change locations on your streaming service will allow you to watch certain shows that are no longer available in your home catalog, like The Office, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, whatever you watch. Or you probably already know my favorite, you can use Surfshark to buy airplane tickets from a different location and save money because those airlines charge different things depending on where you buy from sometimes. Yeah, and Surfshark is available on unlimited devices. Did you tell them that yet? He's right. Folks, as always, if you're interested in Surfshark, click the link in the description and you'll get 83% off and three free months. But wait. Did you know that that's just for the basic plan Surfshark Starter? They also have Surfshark One, which comes with antivirus and alert. And then there's also Surfshark One Plus, which does everything that One does, but you also get Incogni, which protects your data on the internet. So whatever plan you choose, you should still choose Surfshark. Now let's get back to the video. Thanks, sponsored Gotham. Oh, and by the way, I know I just promoted one thing, but you may notice there is now a stack of books behind me. Uh, this is not really a promotion, but I would just like to say that the UK sent me 20 of my own book. So maybe I'll be giving those away in the future. Maybe I'll be signing some of these. I don't know. But if you haven't pre-ordered this thing already, there's like a million links in the description. 16,000 have been pre-ordered, so... It drops on October 24th. I am super, super excited. Uh, let's begin this game. So I was playing against uh, Vladimir Bilic uh, from, uh, from Bosnia, I do believe. Bosnia indeed. Uh, I've played this gentleman many times and um, here we go. I got nothing else to say. So I started the game with pawn to b3 because I'm 2700 and I can play whatever openings I want and you can't judge me for that, dad. Pawn to d5, bishop to b2. This is called the Nimso Larsen. Uh, I'm allowed to play different openings, and I actually don't make many videos where I play b3, bishop b2, but I've, I've played every opening. And the point is that you just target the center from far away. Black has many approaches. Uh, black can make a pawn move that directly instigates against this approach, and then black would try to play knight c6, and there's setups where black wants the entire center, and then white challenges black's grasp on the center. Uh, my opponent, though, plays it in a way where they are not interested in putting a pawn on e5, Rather, they just want one pawn on d5, uh, and then they're going to play from there. And since my opponent has taken a light squared approach in the center of the board, I'm going to take a dark squared approach in the center of the board with moves like knight to f3, and sometimes pawn to f4. So I played uh, pawn to e3. I, I don't like the move c6. There's nothing wrong with the move c6, but you're blocking the development of your knight. You are definitely bolstering your center, but now since your knight can't go there, it wants to go there, and since you going there would block your bishop, now you are relying on playing kind of a reverse London setup. So basically, black needs to go bishop f5 and then knight d7, which is completely fine. I play e3, bishop f5, and now is kind of an important uh, moment in the game, which way I'm going to develop and which of these pawns I'm going to move. The position is, of course, equal. There is nothing really much to think about here. I've probably played some hundreds of games, and I generally like to play this move f4. f4 is a mildly weakening move in the sense that the king is a bit weak, but it's basically impossible to exploit because it's like move three or four. Uh, and I'm trying to take control of the dark squares. And in the future, the advancement of this pawn will help me because I'm going to have a rook on this file. So the advancement of this pawn will likely contribute uh, to, uh, to my attack in the future, but... For now, I am obviously weakening a little bit of central control because I can't ever move the pawn backwards and I won't be able to fight for those squares. Actually, this pawn is the hero of this game, so keep an eye on it. My opponent plays e6, now I develop my knight, and you kind of see the justification of my entire setup. I just have a lot of control of the, of the e5 square. Now my opponent needs to start developing knights because if they develop bishops only, they lose. They just straight up lose a rook. 
They might be able to trap my rook in the corner, but there is absolutely no need to play like this. My opponent plays knight f6, and now I need to finish up my development, so I develop my bishop to e2. Black plays h6, black plays h6, because in some positions, this bishop is a target, so I can play knight h4, which is a very sneaky move. It, it looks like white just wanted to castle, but now the bishop's got nowhere to go. <coughs> if bishop e4, pawn to d3, bishop g6, and I'm just going to take it at some point. So like, castles, castles, take, take, and I just get two bishops. I just, I, I just get the two bishops, and then I try to get all the other benefits of the position. So my opponent preemptively plays h6, which makes sense. I wasn't necessarily thinking of knight h4, but it's just a logical move. I castle, my opponent develops the knight, and now it's kind of time to figure out how else I'm going to put my pieces out. If I play knight c3, my knight does not really participate in the game, and it blocks my bishop. If I put my knight here by moving this pawn, I really shouldn't do this because I block my bishop, uh, but if I play pawn to uh, d3, which I did a little bit later, I weaken that pawn. So I have to develop in a, in, a, in a logical way. Now, before I played this move, I figured knight g4 would be an issue. Knight g4. So I figured, all right, I'm going to play pawn to h3 first. Uh, and so my opponent developed, and now I played pawn to d3 and knight to d2. So I've made 10 moves, okay? I've made 10 moves. This is, this is my developed position. Of course, I don't have any advantage whatsoever because... All we've done is develop our pieces. It's just an equal position, but we have all the pieces on the board, all 16 pieces. So now it's time to fight, right? Now is when one side, it's like a one-on-one, like -on -one, you know, kick, uh, kickboxing match. You know, you jab at each other, you, you cross, you, 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 you fight for foot positioning. It's southpaw, orthodox, like everything matters, right? We're gonna poke and prod at each other. One side is gonna be a little bit more aggressive than the other, because that's generally how things go. And my opponent immediately plays a5. So my opponent wants to instigate on this side of the board and bait a pawn move out of me, or they want to just knock on the door and be like, hello. So if I play a4 in this position, preventing a4 by black, that loses control of the dark square. So I played a little bit, like, a, like I played possum a little bit, like one square. You want to come forward? Come forward. Come get me. My opponent absolutely came to get me. Pawn to a4. <laughs> uh, now, it is bad for me to leave this here, because if take, this just opens up a target in my position. Now, it's also bad for me to take the rook. I mean, to take the pawn. Because my opponent, while they can take with the rook, will probably just wait. Because that pawn is not going anywhere. At which point, the knight will arrive and pressure this. So instead of that, I played b4. But I played b4 knowing full well that that pawn is now a target. And my opponent plays c5. So for the first half of this game, you know, it's my opponent instigating against me my opponent putting pressure on my pawns and very tough decisions I have to make. Like, do I push? Do I take? Do I, do I help their pieces get out? Um, obviously, this is a bad move because I'm just blocking my own bishop. And now if my opponent just takes space, worst case scenario, I get entombed. And I mean, I'm just like completely suffocating here. So c5 played. And right around this moment, um, I decided that I was going to go b5 for two reasons. Number one, I didn't want to facilitate the opening of the position for my opponent. If I take, you know, they're just going to take back. So I play b5. And I figured I could always defend this pawn with this pawn and then also with my rook. And my bishop still stays better. So my opponent immediately plays queen a5, targeting my pawn. And I can indirectly defend the pawn by playing rook b1, which defends the pawn because of tactics. Or I can play this move pawn to c4. And I thought, okay, what a very tense position, right? I mean, like, black is trying to instigate with me. I'm defending my, my weak pawns. Now, a move here that surprised me was pawn take c4. Because originally my intention was to just take. But then, you know, I, I, th th there's something in chess called seeing a ghost. Okay? And I, I, I saw a ghost here because I really didn't like the opening of this diagonal and the file. Now, the computer is completely unafraid and says, play g4, you moron. I mean, I would, I, you, you couldn't pay me money to play the move g4. You could probably. I, I, I don't, you probably give me $10,000, I'll play the move g4. Probably less. I, I don't actually know. It's a good question. How much money would you take to play this? 20 bucks? 50 bucks? Like, I don't know. It, it depends. Am I in a tournament? Is there cash on the line? I don't know. You give me 20 bucks. It gets me, like, you know, a coffee in New York City. Um... Anyway, I, so I, I didn't like this position. I, I, thought, I thought all of this pressure was bad for me. So I decided I'm going to sacrifice a pawn. Not quite as emphatic as sacrificing a rook as I'm famous for, but you know what? I'll take it. And I just completely lost the pawn on b5. But as you can tell, despite being a pawn down, my position's not bad. If it was bad, this would be minus 1, but it's minus 0.4, which means I have compensation. 
I'm compensating. You know, not like, uh, not like uh, a man compensates for various personal insecurities by getting a very loud motorcycle that they drive at 3 o'clock at night in the middle of this big city when everybody's trying to sleep, uh, or an aggressive muscle car or anything like that. You know, I'm compensating for the fact that I don't have a pawn by playing actively on the B-file. Um, so I played rook B1. My opponent got out of the way, queen c6. The problem with queen c6 is you get out of the way of the rook, but now you walk directly into the next line of assault. Now, here, and in all chess positions, you should be thinking, how do I play with my pawns? How do I play with my pieces? Okay? So, I'm playing with my pieces here because I'd like to put my bishop there, and my knight is active. And I don't mind the trade because that's just going to get more pieces into the game. So, my opponent plays queen c7, and I activate my light squared bishop. So, I've just made two small improvements, and look at this. Back to equal. Back to equal, despite me being a full pawn down. The reason is it's very tough for black to move. Black is actually just a couple of moves away from getting totally beaten up. So my opponent plays rook a7. I was like, man, this is a nice looking position for me. Black is very passive. What do I do now? And my friends, from this point forward, from this point forward, I played 14 top computer moves in a row. It all actually started from around this point. From, the, from this point forward until the conclusion of the game, I played the 14 best moves. You could have replaced me with Stockfish. And Stockfish would have played the same moves, which is crazy. Which is absolutely bananas. You ready? We've played uh, 18 moves of chess. So, it's very close. It's like a tie for first. Stockfish very much still likes G4 and just going, just going for it. Utilizing this bishop, utilizing the locked center. Lock center really benefits the attacking side and just going for it like this. I did it this way. I played pawn to e4, forcing my opponent's bishop out of the game. And now I anticipated that my opponent wants b5. A lot of chess is realizing what do I want and what do they want. Selfish chess players worry about what I want. I want to attack! And all of a sudden comes b5. And now you're like, oh man, oh, I didn't see that. Now knight e3. And then your opponent plays, you know, I don't know, rook d8, pawn to c4, and now you're losing. If you can minimize the amount of moments in a chess game, you go, oh, damn, I didn't think of that move. You're going to be in good shape. So I played bishop a1, the top computer move, because I continue to apply pressure, but I stopped the move pawn to b5. Now my opponent plays rook b8. Looks like I'm going to get hit with the move b5. I got no, I got no way to stop it. b5's coming. Can I stop it? Like, nope, can't stop it with this or this. I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. Unless, this is probably my most clutch move of the game. Rook to b5. That move does nothing except prevent the pawn from physically putting itself on b5. I said, nope. I'm like the bully at the playground. I ran to the slide and I said, no, this is my slide. Get out of here. And my opponent, what makes this move possible and good, my opponent can't touch my rook. None of these pieces can get to my rook. None of these pawns can get to my rook. My rook will just stand there until my opponent finds a way to get rid of it. But maybe finding a way to get rid of it is the wrong plan because by trying to get rid of it, it's like tying your own shoes together. So my opponent reacts immediately to this move, plays knight e8, disconnects the rook from the king, takes a step backwards, and gives me access to a square. That move is trying to go knight d6, but then I would just take. So by trying to take a step backwards... My opponent allows me to play the next top computer move, bishop to h5. On the surface, looks like a very beginner move. I'm just trying to play bishop takes f7. But just like this move, there's a hidden layer underneath. This is advanced chess. There's no way to get rid of my rook. That's what makes it a good move. There is no way to get rid of my bishop except playing this. Because if you play knight to d6, I take the knight and I take the pawn. By playing pawn to g6, you severely weaken this pawn, you weaken your king, and you block your bishop. So my move was very clever. Now at this moment, I played one of the best moves I've played in the last couple of months. I realized I have way more attacking pieces than my opponent. One, two, three, four, five potentially. And I realized something. I don't have to retreat. I played the most clutch of the move, uh, the most uh, clutch move of the game by far here. F5! Remember I told you that pawn was going to be a hero? F5. That pawn moved on the fourth move of the game. You fast forward a little bit later, pawn to F5. Pawn to F5 completely loses the bishop. But taking the bishop opens up the king. 
also invites my queen into the position, and third of all, it takes time. One entire move spent on this just allows me to knock on the door, but I got news for you. What else do you do? The computer does not even realize how strong this move is. I'm not even exaggerating. That sounds like I'm exaggerating. The computer does not realize how strong. Watch it. It says 0 0.3, 0 0.13, right? Watch this. I'm going to follow what it recommends. Takes, 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 here, queen d8. This is what the computer recommends. Queen g4, king f8, pawn to f6. Knight takes f6. There's queen f4. If bishop takes f6, rook b6. Rook a6, rook f takes f6. Knight takes f6, bishop takes f6, black has to sacrifice, otherwise this is coming. Take, 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 knight e5. Now suddenly it's ballooned by 6 to 7x from that original evaluation. And the more you let the computer think, the bigger the evaluation grows. Now, did I see all of that? No, absolutely not. But what I did know is that this move is actually one of the top computer moves. The, the others are like... Bishop g4 and just slowly attacking. F5 is so clever. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pat myself on the back here because like I said, black has to find 10 moves in a row to not lose. Everything else is losing. Every step black takes in the wrong direction after F5 loses the game. Pawn takes h5. Now, before I play queen h5, I realized I should open up my rook. Chess is all about time. Time and initiative. Right now, I can go queen h5, but then I'm not going to have time to open up my rook. So, best move. Top engine move. Position is plus 4.7 because of this. This pawn is not going anywhere. This move hits this and this. Black is in trouble. Pawn takes f7 is devastating. Pawn takes knight is devastating. If you play this move, I take x-raying you. You have to block. Then I take, and after you play something like king f8, I have bishop g7, king g7, and queen a1! Forcing your king to come up, at which point it gets mercilessly hunted to its death, and I can even promote to a knight and mate you. It's very embarrassing. It's very, it's embarrassing. It's mate in a few moves. So I took on e6, took on e6, and now I went for queen h5. Every move that I have played since I played the move, bishop to a1 has been a top engine move. e4, bishop a1, rook b5, planting my pieces forward, disallowing my opponent forward access. Now I'm threatening mate in two. Queen f7, king h8, double check. And that hero bishop from the corner, black's pieces are all tied together. Like, they, none of them can move. So my opponent plays knight f6. My queen obviously makes the next step forward, which is queen f7 check. King h8. Now what do I do? I always like to tell y'all, eight times out of ten, the best move in chess is not going backwards. This is one of the two. You could probably go forwards, and the attack will succeed. Like, white has a very monstrous attack here. Look at these pieces. 19 points of material on a smoke break as the bank is getting broken into and robbed. I mean, this is like really, really, really bad stuff over here. So my opponent plays king h8, and I play knight g4. Chess is a simple game. The bishop hits this, four pieces stockpile, very bad news, and it's game over. But you can still convert a game flawlessly, and that is what I tried to do. I also have to scan that there's no checks, captures, or attacks. There's no checks. My opponent goes bishop d6. My queen is hanging. Now, the best move in this position is not to trade queens and then take the knight. It's not to play anything else. The best move in this position, of course, you guessed it, the best move in this position is to sacrifice the rook! Rook takes f6! The idea of this move is very, very simple. This bishop is a hero. You need the bishop. You cannot just take on f6 with the bishop. You play rook takes f6. If the opponent takes queen f6, king g8, this is mate, and this is mate in a couple of moves. But this is, of course, checkmate in one. And if my opponent takes like this, I get a knight. This is discovered check. My opponent plays e5, and now we strip the defender. Knight takes d6. Every piece has been stuck on its square for the last 5 to 10 moves. Bishop takes e5 check. Knight takes h6 checkmate. The craziest part about this position is these pieces were spectators. They did not move. I ravaged the Black King's territory and nothing was done about it. 
And that rook stayed right there. It's just incredible. Like the element of time. This rook versus these two rooks on the edge of the board completely dominated Black's position. Black was unable to deal with the pressure on the queen side while dealing with the pressure on the king side. All the way back here. Losing the pawn for some compensation. Pawn to e4. Putting the bishop right back there. And from this point forward, these pieces did not move. From here, rook b5. And it was an avalanche. My opponent made one misstep. One. Dealing with the move rook to b5. And it was a 10-piece combination. Bishop h5. f5. Take. Take again. Blasting into the position. Taking a step backwards to pry apart the defenses. Sacrificing the rook to win material. Take the bishop. And just... I, I was so proud of this game. <laughs> um... From moves 18 to 32. 14 top stockfish moves in a row. Um, hopefully that, uh, that game taught you a few things. Taught you uh, the importance of understanding what the opponent wants in juxtaposition to what you want. Peace placement in certain situations and what qualifies as a good move. Uh, how to start an attack. How to start a same side attack in chess. Having a peace majority on that attack. Using pawn breaks to break into the position. When is a good moment to sacrifice? All of this was made possible by the fact that Black had no responses. Black could not capture anything. Black could not attack anything. Black had no useful checks. And we utilized this space advantage, mobilized forward, and uh, won a nice game. That's all I have for you today. Get out of here.